One of the features of um, data privacy type um, uh, actions is that very often the complaint is identical for every person and therefore it naturally lends itself to a class action type response. The risks associated with um, data breach and class actions for clients can be um, huge. There's many things that clients can do um, straight away to mitigate the risk. There's the crisis management element, so how to respond to an issue when it arises. There's the regulatory elements, who do you need to report to uh, and in what way. Uh, and thirdly, there's the claims element, there's the disputes that could follow from um, disgruntled customers who have been affected by the incident. It's important that, um, that very senior management endorses those policies and procedures and embeds them within the business because Nobody wants a data breach, nobody expects it to happen, but when it does, it's really important that it's responded to by all levels of management. The single greatest innovation in the legal profession has been access to funding for claims. The emergence of litigation funding or arbitration funding has presented class action claimants with the ability to bring claim without the burden of having to pay up front. Funding has provided the key which unlocks multiple claims more often in more jurisdictions for more people. We are now seeing the cross-collateralization between claims and the defense of claims. We will increasingly see large corporates in particular sectors, in the energy and natural resources sector, for example, in the manufacturing sector, in pharma, who traditionally have been defendants, but who are also, as a predatory commercial exercise, pursuing claims, including class actions, uh, seeking funding on both sides. There are really two types of claims that shareholders can bring. Um, the first is the traditional common law claims. Uh, that's, that involves a misrepresentation claim, uh, a representation or omission which is said to be misleading. Um, you can also bring claims under the tort of deceit where you have set out to deceive someone. Um, you can also bring claims under, the, uh, under uh, fiduciary duties. Um, the com public company is said to have duties to the shareholder and those have been breached. The other way that claims can be brought is under statutory remedies. First and foremost, companies need to be aware that this is a growing risk in the UK market. What companies have to do is when there are situations, whether it's to do with financial reporting, whether it's to do with um, irregularities in their business, they need to be aware that there is a class action risk. And what this ultimately comes down to is having in place robust compliance and governance programs cooperating with regulators to the extent possible so that you're aware of particular risks. When there is a problem, engaging with regulators. And finally, at a very early stage, putting in place a pre-litigation strategy so that if and when litigation does happen, everyone's got their ducks in a row. Financial services mass litigation has been around for a very long time. It's almost been the broad base for the mass claims industry and it's turned into a very lucrative industry. Where we see perhaps the new big thing, the new trends, well I think every claims management company is looking to find the new PPI and the new mis-selling service. So what we need to be looking out for is the changes in the regulatory landscape. For example, what is the FCA looking at? What is the Financial Ombudsman Service looking at? And then seeing how that's been replicated in the social media um, and news bursts that the claims management companies are putting out there. How we can mitigate the claims management activity for our financial clients is to check what is on social media, to check what is on the consumer forums, see what news articles are being repeated in the consumer and retail space, and delve into how you think that could be replicated into a claim against you as a financial institution. Once you're aware as to what the issue is and that you're aware as to the type of claim that that might be, it could be a mis-selling claim, an unfair relationship claim, then you can determine your exposure and once you figure that out then you can resource appropriately. Global companies need to have a global strategy when dealing with product issues. Now that starts at the very beginning, long before litigation starts. The market's really changed in the last 10 years or so and that's really been a result of the 
forces of globalisation. I think first and foremost regulatory action um, is much more aggressive than it used to be and it's much more international. Um, risks that may have once been able to be contained to particular countries uh, now will spread. The second factor which is driving that is the rise of uh, social media. Um, what we're observing is, is that um, allegations, concerns, information uh, can spread much more easily. I think the third thing that we're observing is that there's a lot more innovation in how product liability claims are being brought. What we've also observed is how data is becoming um, essential to product liability claims. Products are collecting more and more data about their customers, where they are operating, how they are operating. So how the product deals with that data and how the company that made the product then processes that data is becoming a core part of the product liability uh, litigation space. There's been a huge change in, in, in um, Scotland in the class actions case in that it's now competent to raise class actions. There will be a heightened uh, activity for class actions in Scotland. I think there's been a lot of action, a lot of cases that have been waiting for the change in the rules to, to kick off. So once the rules are fully in place, we're expecting to see two or three cases come, come before the courts. I think our clients are going to be mostly defending these actions and I think our clients should be should be ready and, and prepared to, to engage that in Scotland they're, now, they're not now going to be facing one case at a time that they're going to have to introduce a whole new procedure and way that they liaise with the courts, ways that they way that they liaise and work with their lawyers and, um, and in order to, to handle these, um, these um, large claims it's not anything that they've ever had to face before.